we have to talk about it. Physically, I started to have pain. I started to have belly aches. Um, my hands started to be white, like I had no blood. I started thinking, Lord, please, please, don't let anything happen to me. Good morning, guys, and welcome to our channel. My name is Pearl, and this is the Regis family. Today, you guys, I just want to talk to you about some of the things that have been happening. Remember that Grace was sick for a long time. What that has done to me, how I have been coping, the toll that it has taken on me. And to be honest, as caretakers, as caregivers, we often don't talk about the things that we go through. We often don't talk about the toll it takes on our bodies physically, mentally, emotionally, and even spiritually sometimes. We really don't talk about it because sometimes we find that there are some people who are quick to criticize us, but sometimes we need to talk about it. So today I'm going to talk to you guys about the toll it has taken on me with Gracie being sick back to back like this for months. But first, I would like to say thank you to all of my subscribers. Thank you guys so much for supporting this channel. Thank you guys so much for supporting us. Thank you to our new subscribers. Welcome to the, the community and to our existing subscribers. Thank you guys so much for always being there. Um, for those of you who are commenting, thank you guys so much. Your comments mean so much to me. It has helped me along the way and I really, really appreciate it. For those of you who are here, who are new, and you guys don't know much about our daughter, her name is Grace. Gracie has been diagnosed with trisomy 18, full trisomy 18, and also autism level 3. She was diagnosed with trisomy 18 a week after she was born, and autism level 3 last year. So guys, with all that said, I am not complaining about my daughter. She's a real blessing. Having Gracie has changed my life. Having Gracie has changed my perspective on a lot of things. And I'm grateful that I have her. I'm happy I have her. And I love this child to death. And I will do everything that I can to help her. But I also need to talk about some of the things that I go through as a mother. Um, my husband goes through it too. But I will talk to you guys about most of the things that I have gone through with having a child with special needs and the toll it takes on me. And... That doesn't mean that it's not taking a toll on my husband. For sure, it's taking a toll on my husband. Grace's immune system is not as strong as a typical child's um, immune system. Gracie, when she gets sick, she gets really sick. Imagine a child getting sick with a cold. And when that child gets sick, that child is either life or death for that child. And you have to be constantly on your, on your feet, you have to be constantly thinking and you have to be thinking fast. You have to be able to process things fast. You have to be able to know this child, know when she's, she can stay home, know when she's not able to stay home, know when to take her and you cannot delay. You must be quick thinking. And wow, Gracie has been sick before. Gracie spent eight and a half months straight in hospital from the time she was born until she was eight and a half months. And I'm telling you, what I went through with Gracie this time around, it cannot, cannot compare to anything else I have gone through with Grace. Honestly, this one was very, very hard. And today I would like to talk about it because I'm pretty sure a lot of you are going through stuff and you don't talk about it. And one of the things too that we often get when we try to open up to other people, they tend to condemn us. They tend to criticize us. And we, on, on the other hand, we pull back and we shut down and we keep it all to ourselves. This is not healthy. This is not healthy. I'm going to tell you that straight up. I have done it and it has affected me immensely. It is not healthy. If you're going to talk to somebody and that person is going to criticize you, this is not the right person to talk to. And you should not shut down as a result of that person's behavior no don't do that after we came from saint lucia um at the end of august right after gracie got sick in the at the beginning of september gracie got sick with a cold and she, it, it 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 progressed and then we had to take gracie to the hospital when we got to the hospital imagine gracie was fine she was 
she was sat in well, but we, we realized she was dipping and coming back, dipping and coming back. So we decided, you know what, let's take Gracie to the hospital. Better safe than sorry. By the time we got to the hospital with Grace, Gracie was already solo. Gracie needed um, high flow in order to help her. They gave her low flow. That was not helping her. They gave, um, when they gave her high flow, it helped her. And Gracie was on a lot of oxygen. Um, they did some blood work and the blood work came back. They told us that she was not exhaling her gas already, you guys, already, right? Had To me, had we lingered a little bit longer, Lord forbid, I don't even want to think of what could have happened to Grace. But we got there and she was okay. They had to admit Gracie. Gracie was admitted for three nights in the hospital. Y'all, I had to stay in the hospital with Grace. And now when your child is in the hospital, the family can come visit the child during the visiting hours but after visiting hours they cannot stay usually they used to let my husband stay with me and because i have caleb and i have nobody else to take care of caleb they, they would allow caleb to spend the night but this time around they did not um even at what time i think two o'clock in the morning uh, we were asking for my husband to stay and they told us no, he has to go. And I'm like, we've been up for nights, you know, taking care of Gracie, making sure she's okay. We are here and he has not slept and he has to drive back home. You know, it's, it's going to be too much. What if he falls asleep at the wheel? What, what What's going to happen to my husband? What's going to happen to my son? Right? You were thinking of all of these things and they are saying, no, they can't, they cannot stay there. So eventually I, I really had to advocate really hard and they said, okay, for tonight, but ne the following night, for however long this child stays here, they cannot stay. I was like, I never asked you for that. I asked you for him to just spend the remaining of the hours so he can go home. But they finally allowed him to stay. Now, I was the only one at the hospital with Grace. Um, Gracie was in a bed and I was in the bed with her. When Grace is sick, Gracie will not stay in any bed by herself. Gracie wants to be on my chest. And the best way for Gracie to be breathe better was to put her on my chest for her to breathe better. When she's on the bed, she would be sat even more. I had to put the bed in a position where um, it was slanting a bit and I had to sit in the bed with Gracie sleeping on my chest and that's the only way Grace would sleep. Put Gracie in the bed, Gracie would be sat a lot and Gracie would cry a lot and that would have made it worse. Her heart rate would have gone up. It wasn't gonna be good. So I did that for her. And I'm not complaining. I'm just trying to tell you guys some of the things that we went through. But having Gracie on my chest, my husband is not there to help me. Having to go to the bathroom, I can't go to the bathroom. I have to hold my pee until a nurse comes in. And when the nurse comes in, I have to ask her, can she stay with Grace? And I had to run to the bathroom. Imagine you want to pee and you're trying to hold that pee, y'all. Your bladder hurts. Your belly hurts. It's painful. You have to run to the bathroom when the person comes, when you get a little chance to go relieve yourself. And that happened, and I can't drink water. I just could not drink water. Why? When you drink water, you will have to go empty. And I cannot. There's nobody to help me. I am not able to sleep. I am not able to go to the bathroom when I need to. And it was very hard. I did that for, um, I think, two nights. And it was very hard. And I said, no, this is not right. This, this is not right. And I remember one night I decided, okay, let me see if I can put Gracie on the bed. I put Gracie on the bed and Gracie was desatin. And that night they had taken the oxygen off of her. And I remember the nurse coming into the room and said, um, fix Gracie because she's desatin. And she told me, at that time I had fallen asleep. I just couldn't stay up anymore. I had fallen asleep. It wasn't that long in between. I put her down and as soon as I put her down, um, I fell asleep and Gracie was desatin. And I remember the nurse coming to me and, and she woke me up and she said, fix Gracie because she's desatin. If she continues to desat, I'm going to have to put the oxygen back on her. So I said to her, okay. I put Gracie back on my chest and I sat up with Grace and she did not desat for the duration of the night. 
and I just could not go to the bathroom, you guys. And that happened for two nights. And I'm getting dehydrated. I'm having pain. Um, I'm having headaches. I have not slept for nights, not only at the hospital, but remember when she was at home, I was already not sleeping. Because you know your child, you know your child is going to have problem breathing whenever your child gets a cold so i am up making sure that she's okay she's breathing if i have to wake her up i have to wake her up and at that time she was already sleeping on my chest i just could not sleep so the second day when the second day came i said no i can't do this i'm gonna have to talk to somebody the nurse we had the morning when she came very nice nurse the nurses we had they were very nice um, when she came, I spoke to her and I explained to her, you know, I expressed to her how I was feeling and how much pain I was in and how I was, and that could cause infection. I told her how I could not even drink water, not drinking water. That means that's going to be hard on my kidneys. That's going to be hard on my whole body. And she said, I understand what you're saying. I said, I understand the rules, but sometimes, you know, you guys should have ex exceptions. Sometimes we are not asking because we feel privileged or we are entitled, but here is the situation and here is how it is affecting me. You understand? As the parent. And if I'm not well, how am I supposed to take care of my daughter? And she said to me, I understand what you're saying. And I, I and I explained to her the back and forth I had with the charge nurse that we met the first night you were there. And she said, I'm sorry you went through that. I understand. And she went and she spoke to her charge nurse. This was a different charge nurse. And she explained the situation. And then they gave us the okay for my husband to stay with me the night. And I said to them, here's the thing. I don't have nobody else to help me. And I have my son. I can't leave him home. Is it okay for him to stay there? You guys don't have to make any special provision. They are okay. They will stay here. I will stay on the bed. I just need some help. So she said to me, that's fine. They gave me the okay. And I was so grateful. Lord, thank you. God bless this these nurses who made it possible for my husband to stay with me at the hospital to help me. My husband was always willing, but we just didn't have the okay for him to stay. So he stayed with me. And that day, guys, I drank water. Thank God. Thank God. God bless these nurses. And I was able to go and empty my bowel. And then Gracie got discharged on the fourth day. She spent three nights there. And on the fourth day, she was discharged. And we came home. When we came home, there was so much to do. I had, she had appointments. I couldn't go to the appointment. I had to do it um, virtual. I just had to do what I had to do. I did it for her. But guys, the reason for this video, I just want to tell you the toll that it took on my body. And I'm pretty sure that a lot of you are going through things like that and we just don't talk about it. It took a mental toll on me. It took a physical toll on me and we have to talk about it no man is an island when i came home i still could not sleep i had to sit up with gracie on my chest physically i started to have pain i started to have belly aches my hands started to be white like i had no blood it was just white and yellow um underneath my feet it felt like i was walking on pins and needle um it's underneath my feet were very sensitive this arm was very sensitive um the side here was burning and hurting real inflammation it was so so painful you guys um you know the symptoms you get when you have an infection, a bladder infection? All of these things started to happen to me. And I don't want to cry. But you guys, I started thinking, Lord, please, please, don't let anything happen to me. Don't let anything happen to me. If something were to happen to me, Lord, my husband can't do it alone. It's just the two of us. He would not be able to do it alone. And I started to drink water. And I started to eat healthy. I was not able to eat. I started to do things to help 
my body so I could get better. Um, I would let my heart. Uh, I would let my husband take care of Gracie and try to take a nap during the day because all under my eyes, all here was black. It was just black. And I, what I would do when I'm going outside, I didn't go outside for weeks, but after when I had to go outside, I made sure I had makeup on and I made sure I had concealer on so that people wouldn't see it. Yeah, we are good at masking. We are very good at that. I had so much pain and burning all here, all here, at the back, here. And I started to drink lots of water and I started to drink, um, put lime or lemon in my water and drink it. Um, the other thing I did too, I, I was eating meat. So I stopped eating the meat and I started to eat plant-based. Eating the plant-based, the white in my hand, when I pull on this here, when I pull here inside of my eye, it was white. So I'm like, okay, my iron is low. So I said, I can't stop eating the meat. I have to go back. I started eating the meat again. When I started eating the meat and stuff to help me build my iron, I started to drink more water to flush out my system. I started to drink some herbal teas. <sighs> and I remember going to, I volunteer at a, at a food bank. I remember going there and I met the team leader and she was telling me, we always talk about stuff we go through. And she was telling me how um, she was going to start a juice fast. <laughs> like I was desperate because I wanted to do it, but I was afraid of failure. I was afraid of not doing it. I wanted a partner where I would have to be accountable. You know, when you tell somebody I'm doing this, and you know you've told that person and you you can't go back you have to go you have to keep your word so this lady was a savior <laughs> honestly so i started to do the juicing i did a lot of fruit juices i did i don't like the green juice i'm not gonna lie to you i don't like the green juice i did one green juice per day and the rest of the juices i did i did um fruit juices and i just went on a juice fast nothing else but juice and water and doing, doing this, it helped me tremendously. I did it until I ran out of money. I couldn't afford to buy more fruits to juice. And I was very disappointed. I was really disappointed when I could not continue with the juicing fast. So I said, okay, I took it really hard. <clears throat> Excuse me. I took it really hard. <clears throat> but I had to talk to myself and say, Pearl, it's okay. Because, <clears throat> because me stressing about it would just make the situation worse. It would make the situation worse. As I'm talking to you and it, 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 it did hit me and I wanted to cry, but I held back my tears. Do you realize I am <clears throat> all the time? This is one of the things that was happening to me as well lots of mucus in my throat and <sighs> lots of mucus in my throat so <sighs> i tend to drink i'll tell you guys what i've been doing so after the juice fast i couldn't continue so i said to myself you know what it's okay i'm gonna eat i try to go plant-based and there are lots of things that my body cannot handle so I decided I'm going to continue eating um, my meat to help me. I am going to make sure that I eat my greens, my salads. I love salads, you guys. Thank God for that. I love salads. I could eat salad morning, noon, and night, and that would be fine with me. Make sure that I'm eating my greens and try to have at least one juice per day. And I'm trying to drink plenty of water to flush out my system. Now, I am at a better place now than I was a few weeks ago. Um, I am also trying to get some steps in because exercise, y'all, exercise works so well. It helps so much with stress. It helps so much when you are sick. So I try my best to 
I have a treadmill. And the other thing I did too is I bought a rebounder. I bought this. You could say it's a mini trampoline. I bought that and I tried to rebound. I jumped on it. I remember the first time I jumped on it. I could not go for five minutes. What five minutes? The first time I could not go for two minutes. I couldn't. I could not jump on this thing. And I wasn't jumping. I was from my heel on my toes. From my heel on my toes. This is what I was doing. From my heels on my toes. And I could not do it for two minutes. The second time when I went to do it, I did it past two minutes, but I couldn't reach five minutes. The third time when I did it, I did it for a good while. And I was so happy, you guys. Consistency. Just keep on doing it. I started to rebound and I started to rebound. And that has really helped me. And I also walk on my treadmill sometimes. Now, I cannot do it every day. I don't have the time every day, but I make sure I try to do that. Now, the other thing I am going to encourage us to do is I'm going to encourage us to make time for ourselves. I remember when Gracie first came home from the hospital, I remember a friend of mine was telling me, um, my friend Rosie, shout out to Rosie. She was telling me, um, Pearl, I understand you have to take care of Gracie. I understand the situation that you're in, but you have to remember, you have to take care of yourself because Lord forbid something were to happen to you. Who's going to take care of Grace? Is Paul going to be able to do all of that? And she was right. She was, she was right. But even then I was like, Rose, I understand what you're saying, but my daughter is sick. My daughter needs me, my daughter, my daughter. And I kept on with that for years, disregarding my health, disregarding self-care. Um, I, I started to do it. I started to take care of myself, but I was not doing enough. So I'm here to encourage you guys to please, please take care of yourselves. This child that we love so much that we are willing to sacrifice our health, our life for. This child deserves better. This child deserves us being healthy to be there, to be able to take care of this child. We cannot, we cannot continue like that. We can't. We are killing ourselves and it's not worth it. It's not good for the child that we love. It's not good for ourselves. It's not good for our husband. It's not good for the rest of the children. We need to do better. And I'm saying that because of what I have gone through. Self-care is important. We should prioritize. We must prioritize self-care. We must. When I realized, Lord, am I dying here? I remembered what Rose told me and I felt guilty. And I'm going to be honest with you. I know I've been, I'm being vulnerable here. I'm going to be honest. I love grace to the bone. And I will love grace enough to love me too. And to take care of me too. We do a lot for our families. We do a lot for our children especially one that is not able to help himself or herself. Lord, we do a lot for them. But it is also important that we take care of ourselves. I learned that the hard way. Me time is important. Self-care is important. One of the things too I have done for myself Remember, I have been talking to you guys about trauma I had. I went through during my childhood. I went through a lot of trauma. I was very traumatized and <clears throat> I have done a lot of counseling. And the other thing I did for myself is I did another 10 weeks of counseling just recently. I did another 10 weeks. I started before we went to St. Lucia and we finished. I had two more sessions when we came back and I finished that. I did grief counseling and life coach. And I'm telling you, this has really helped me. Now, I know there is a stigma to somebody taking care of the mental health. There is a, a lot of stigma to it. But you have to think of yourself. What is best for me? What am I doing for myself? Did I deserve what happened to me? No, I did not deserve none of the things that happened to me. It was done to me. So what am I going to do about it now? Am I going to sit there and think of what people are going to think? Am I going to sit there and think of how people are going to look at me? You are doing yourself a disservice. These are some of the things I used to think of. And I paid for it. I paid for it. Get help. You need to talk to somebody about it. Talk to somebody. Don't go talk to anybody. 
because there are some people that will do you more harm than they will do any good to you. Trust me, I've been there. Think of some, look for somebody that you can trust, somebody you know I can open up to, okay? Somebody that will not judge you, but even if that person has to just sit down there and listen and allow you to vent, allow you to just speak and tell that person how you're feeling, find that person. Find professional help if you need that. I did, and I don't regret it, and I am not ashamed of it. I'm very proud of myself for doing that. And I had people in my corner telling me, Pearl, you need that help. Pearl, you need to do that. And I've heard people say, I was watching a, a, a reel on Facebook. And this mom was saying, oh, people say self-care. You have to do this. You have to do that. But as long as you, have, you get enough sleep and you take your vitamins, that suffice. No, it's not. No, it is not. This is a start. But there's so much more. Depending on what you're going through, there's so much more that you can do. If you need a massage, your muscles are hurting, your jawbone is hurting. You need a massage. Go get a massage if you can afford it. It is okay. You deserve it. Do it. If you don't have the money to do it, because life is hard these days, you don't have the money to go for a massage. I need a massage, but I can't afford it right now. You need a walk, go. This is one of the things that I'm doing that is helping me. I have a very supportive husband, and I thank God for that. And I'm not going to be quiet about it. And wait until he dies and for me to stand over his coffin and start talking about oh how good he was to me no my husband needs to hear this the same way i need to hear from him i have a very supportive husband and i will tell him babe let's go for a walk let's go to the park with me and he will say okay let's go it doesn't matter how cold it is and i, I need a walk i go for a walk walking helps me oh my gosh this is such a good therapy for me i will go for a walk the cool breeze on my face, to hear the birds sing, to see the different animals, the trees. I love nature. It helps me. This is one of the things that we do and it helps me. When we come together at home, Caleb loves um, to play puzzle games. I love games too. We sit down as a family, we play together. We laugh together. Laughter is a good medicine. Sometimes we don't laugh enough. Most of the time, we don't laugh. We focus on the, on the situation. We focus on what is going on in our lives. Focus, how can we do better? Focus, how can we give more? You are not an island. I am not an island. Okay, Pearl, step back from the situation. Because the whole time you are in the situation, you are in the situation, you are in the situation. It makes it worse for you mentally, emotionally, physically took a toll on my body. I'm in the situation. I am not leaving the situation because I have to take care of my child. My child needs me. No. I had to step back, step out of it. I had to do that for myself. And I'm asking you the same. You are not a bad parent for doing that. I used to think, what would people think? I used to think, but if I do that, I don't care about my child. I don't love my child. It's because I love my child and my family. That is why I'm stepping back. Have you ever left your child with somebody or somewhere and go out to do something and then come back? When you come back, you feel refreshed. You feel ready to continue to do the work that you have to do. And it's okay to do that because you have given yourself a mental break. I have given myself a mental break. I used to stay home all the time. My husband used to go do the groceries most of the time. I am with Grace. I have to take care of Grace. I have to... Um, I have to return emails i have to make phone calls i have to set up appointments i i was a manager I, I i i the manager the caretaker the nurse the the therapist the everything that's who we are it's all on us to do it but who's taking care of us we have got to love ourselves enough to and take care of ourselves the other thing that helps me is my faith my faith faith in God. Lord, thank you, Jesus. When the situation gets too hard, I pray. There is a lady <laughs> from my church, and sometimes I say to myself, Pearl, she's going to get tired of you asking for prayer. But the other thought that comes in is, Pearl, don't worry about it. You need the prayer. Ask. Guys, asking is not my thing. I don't ask. But when it comes to prayer, I will text her and say, Please pray for me. Most of the times, I don't tell her why I need the prayer. 
And she says, sis, I got you. Jesus loves you. He's always been there for you. He'll always be there for you. Know that he loves you. And it helps me. And it helps me to know that I have others praying for me. Another thing I'm doing as well to help me is to journal. I never used to journal. I hated journaling. I always used to think, well, somebody's going to read my personal thoughts. I don't want to put that on paper. But when I started doing the juice fast, I wanted to document everything. And it quickly turned into <laughs> everything. I journal everything. I, I, I put everything on there. And it is also helping me. I remember my friend Del was telling me, journaling will help you. And I'm like, Del, I'm not journaling. I don't want people to know my thoughts. It's too personal. And she said, it helps me. It would help you. And I must tell Del, Del I'm journaling. But she'll see this video anyways. And I started to journal and it is helping me. I just write down all my thoughts. I just write down my feelings. It's a kind of way, what I've experienced is kind of the thoughts I have in there, I am expressing it. I am writing it down. It's kind of like I'm talking to somebody. I know I'm writing it in the book, but it feels like, okay, you're talking to somebody. Like you're taking it out of your head and you're putting it somewhere else instead of it in your head and it's rolling always in your head rolling back and forth but putting it on the book is like taking it out of your head and putting it in the book it helps it helps another thing that i've been doing is deep breathing i've learned to do deep breathing and i learned that um when i did my 10 weeks of counseling my 10 weeks of therapy god bless you um i am drinking more water i'm also <laughs> doing intermittent fasting at this point um it helps sleeping for me after all of these things started to happen to me it was hard <coughs> for me to sleep the stress y'all stress does prevent you from sleeping it was hard for me to sleep and it's not healthy for you not to sleep you have to sleep um after doing the juice fast, the juicy, um, the sleeping is better for me. I am sleeping well now. Um, and I try my best to go to sleep early. Um, my latest I want to go to bed is at 10. Um, I want to be in bed by 9 o'clock. We worship at 9 and then go to bed. Um, yeah, it's been helping me a lot. Guys. I, I, I am going to, again, encourage you to do some self-care. And it's not selfish to take care of yourself. It is quite okay. Whatever it is that calms you down, whatever it is that changes your mindset, you know, whatever it is that you do that makes you feel like you, the things that you used to do before you had that child or this person in your life, what was helping you to cope with stress? It is okay to do it. You're not selfish. Um, another thing that I am doing right now is I didn't want, and I think it, it, it stems from my childhood to whatever I went through. I think that stems from there. Um, I didn't want my husband to take the kids and go without me. I felt like I had to be there to be with them and to make sure that they were okay, that make sure everything was okay, was going right. I was everywhere with them. We are a family. We are, we are together. And it's a beautiful thing. I was really hands-on, especially with Grace. Another thing I'm doing right now is my husband will take the kids, especially if he's going to pick up Caleb, you know, can you take Gracie with you? So I can have that little time, an hour, an hour and a half by myself, you know, especially I'm, 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 I'm doing this. I can have some time to myself to edit videos. This is another thing that took a back seat because I am the one who's filming. I'm the one who's editing and doing everything. So that took a back seat. And when my husband takes Gracie to pick up Caleb, I'm okay. Or if he's going to pick up the kids, I'll say, you go, I'll stay home. I have some work to do. And guys, working helps. I love to work. Working helps so much. You know, I stay here and I work and I edit and I do what I have to do. 
that helps me i have just some quiet time all to myself with myself working doing the things that i love to do you know the thing that i love to do i i am there doing it another thing that helps me is we always do it devotional me my family and i we wake up we do our devotional get ready to go on our day we do that in the evening before we go to bed we do it again but sometimes during the day i like to sit and just take up a book and read you guys reading helps um oh gosh i don't have the book here right now i have two three books reading the first book i i i read was the wheel to heal by maxi emil and this book is what helped me with the 10 weeks of therapy i told you guys i did this is the book that we use to do it and it is the author of this book who helped me so this book is amazing you guys and it has really helped me with my trauma um the second book let me go get it because the first book that i read was this book the wheel to heal this is the first book that i read this book is an amazing amazing book um and it is very easy to read very under easy to understand and very easy to adopt whatever that is in that book it helped me trust me it is a good book um the second book that i am reading i bought this book first and i just had this book on the shelf i never read it i bought this book second the wheel to heal i bought this one second and I read this one before and I think I think that was the best thing I think it was the best thing this book I read it first it helped me with my my stuff and then this book I read I bought and this is the book I am reading and this book is amazing 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 it helps you with the brain your thoughts and all of these things this book is amazing and by the way I am not this is not a sponsor these people don't even know I'm doing this, but I am just showing you the things that I am doing that is helping me. And I also have this book and I couldn't wait to read this book. <laughs> you guys, I'm still reading the other book, but I started to read a little bit from this book. And this book is Switch on Your Brain. And it's amazing. It's amazing. And all my books, trust me, when I read books, highlighter and... and, and just highlighting points for myself and yeah um reading helps sometimes i i need a quiet time just to read it takes my mind off of my situation and these are some books that can help me now these books they are amazing like i said i went through a very very my childhood was very traumatic. I went through a lot of trauma. Thank God, <laughs> it's getting better. So these books are helping me. I believe that your childhood forms who you are, who you become, who you are today. And it is up to you if you want to stay in the same situation or if you want to be the person that you were meant to be, the person that you really are, the inner person that is screaming out to, let, to be let out. Um... Whatever happened to me, it happened to me. Another thing I've learned is to forgive. And when I forgave, that was a very, very huge turning point for me. This is when you truly forgive, you learn to let go. You learn to let go. But anyways, that is for another video. But I just wanted you guys to know what's been going on with me um how i'm handling it and i just want to encourage you guys um i know the struggles are real a lot of people tend to undermine us and say oh your child is well oh your child gets a cold mine gets a cold too but we know it's not the same thing when you have a child who is complex care you have a child with special needs um the immune system is not as strong as typical children um we know the the struggles that we go through we know what it's like we know i'm not saying don't protect our kids because honestly i don't want nobody who's sick to be around grace or around my family and myself because even if grace is not there and we are there whatever they have we we bring it home to grace we know what it's like and i don't like to see grace is sick 
um whenever grace is sick i am sick too because it's like i'm feeling for her i am going through it it's, it's hard you have a sick child it is very difficult for you you know and sometimes when you see a child on a hospital bed and you see a child fighting and they're trying to put needles y'all it's hard it is hard it takes a real toll on our bodies it takes a real toll on us mentally physically emotionally and i'm not going to pretend am i unstable no i am not but at the same time we got to be honest and we have to find ways to cope with the situation it's not something we ever thought that we would be going through but here we are and what are we going to do about it what are we going to do about it we have to take care of ourselves it is very important that we take care of ourselves okay and i am still encouraging you guys to take care of yourselves eat healthy as much as possible we know that life is hard things are very expensive now but look for sales try to eat healthy drinking water is very important um what i experience i honestly don't want somebody else to go through it but i'm pretty sure a lot of you have gone through it a lot of you are going through it but let's try our best to not allow ourselves to fall there again drink plenty of water eat as healthy as possible um exercise you don't have to have a treadmill if you don't have one um if you can afford to buy a rebounder a rebounder is very very good very very good a rebounder even when you're at home i do it sometimes i put grace to stand on it with me and i don't jump i can't jump you guys not yet but I go from my heel to my toes, from my heel to my toes, and I'm holding Gracie like that, and I'm doing it, and she giggles, she's happy, sometimes she doesn't want to do it, she doesn't want to do it, I put her to sit on the couch, and I just have it in the living room, the way I would like for my living room to be, it's not like that all the time, but I have to do what works for me, if I have to have my rebound there in the middle of my living room, and put my, my coffee table on the side, it's okay, I will do that, because my health is more important than my house looking so speak and spang and everything is in the bread although i don't like it but i do it i put it there i put gracie on the couch and i turn facing gracie and i go like this for however long that i can as long as my body can go i do it as long as gracie is fine she's okay i do it when i'm done i'm sweating and the breathing so it helps me when i'm done i sit there if there's nobody to help me for me to go for a shower <laughs> i stay with the sweat it dries on me it's okay as soon as somebody walks in through the door can you watch crazy for a minute please i'll go take a shower freshen up and come back you know life is not the same the way it used to be we don't have the freedom that we used to have we we this is the life for us but we have to make it work for us so i encourage you to take care of yourselves vitamin and, and enough sleep is not enough it's, it's a start but it's not enough okay and another thing I try to do for myself is I don't have to look like my situation. My situation does not have to reflect on my body. I try my best. I put on my makeup. I put on something nice on me because when I look nice, when I have something nice on me, I feel nice. I feel good. I feel good, you know? And I remember talking to somebody and the person was like pearl you do not reflect your situation i don't have to reflect my situation you know i don't have to i don't have to walk around with me reflecting my situation as a reminder here i'm going no no i don't have to put on your makeup if you have if that's something that you do comb your hair like this morning my hair just was not cooperating i tied it I'm not gonna tie it anyhow but i tied it as you can see the back is just falling at the back i i did a, a bun at the back it fell it's okay it's okay okay i put my clothes on you might say well it's not so nice but compared to how i dress sometimes during the day this is good this is very good so guys if you're watching here and you're new here please consider subscribing to our channel um i will be bringing lots more um this is one of the reasons that we decided to change the name of our channel um i would love to talk about my trauma with you guys one of these days because i'm pretty sure many people are going through stuff and they're stuck like i was stuck
didn't know what to do, where to go, and the way it makes you feel and the way it brings you down. And I will talk about my trauma. Um, there is one in particular I would like to talk about. But you guys, it's very sensitive. I will be putting myself out there. Um, I'm trying to figure out how to do this and when to do it. But I would like to share it. I want to share it by talking. I know that talking is therapy. I know by not talking, you pay a serious price by not talking and nobody cares. The only thing people care about is to make sure that you don't talk, but you have got to talk, but be careful. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. Um, let us know what are some of the things that you're going through? What are some of the things that you were doing to cope with the situation that you're in? Um, what are some of the things that you would like to see featured on this channel? Let us know. Please comment. And guys, the comments, I love it. And I try my best. I do respond to all of the comments. So please comment in the comment section below. Don't forget to give the, the video a like, you guys. Give the video a like. Share with your friends. Share with your family. Share it on your social media and pages. Your communities, the groups that you're in. Share it. Help us to grow it even more. Um, I love you guys so much. And I am so grateful for you guys. I'm so grateful that you guys have subscribed. I'm so grateful that you guys are watching the videos. I'm very grateful that you guys are commenting. Um, I would love to do a live with you guys. Um, let me know if you guys want me to do a live. I would love, love, love to do a live with you guys. I have been thinking about it and I would really love that. If you guys are up for it, then I'm up for it too. Let me know. If you are up for a live, put it in the comment section below. And don't forget to like. Thank you guys so much for watching. And please, 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 please take care of yourselves and your loved ones. Not just your loved ones, but yourselves as well. I love you guys. See you on the next.